Good afternoon, I'm Karen Drew. First and for the wave of sexual harassment allegations is once again hitting Capitol Hill, this time against a sitting U.S. Senator. Today, a woman is accusing Senator Al Franken of forcibly kissing and groping her. This is a picture at the center of the allegations. It was taken back in 2006 when Franken was a comedian touring with the USO. Devin is in the newsroom with the accusations and the senator's response. Well, Karen, a radio news anchor, former sportscaster, says Senator Franken groped her and kissed her without her consent 11 years ago while they were overseas at a USO show. Leanne Tweeden now works at KABC in Los Angeles. She posted this picture uh, from the 2006 trip. It shows Franken looking into the camera his hands appear to be over, some would argue, on her chest while she was sleeping. She also claims during the trip, Franken, of course, used to be a Saturday Night Live regular cast member, uh, wrote a skit for the tour that involved Franken's character trying to kiss her. She says Franken insisted they rehearse the skit backstage, and that's when it happened. He stuck his tongue down my, my mouth, and I remember I pushed him off with my hands, I just remember I almost punched him so because every time I see him now like my hands clench into fists and I'm sure that's probably why and I said if you ever do that to me again I'm not going to be so nice about it the second time and I just walked out away from him and I and I walked out and I just wanted to find a bathroom and I just wanted to rinse my mouth out because I was just disgusted. Now, Senator Franken has released a statement, and it reads, I certainly don't remember the rehearsal for the skit in the same way, but I send my sincerest apologies to Leanne. As to the photo, it was clearly intended to be funny, but wasn't. I shouldn't have done it. A Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell has already called for an ethics investigation into this incident, and Franken issued a sta second statement a little longer uh, later in the day, in which he said he would cooperate with any probe. Now, the allegations, of course, come as Republican Senate candidate Roy Moore faces allegations of sexually harassing several girls back in the late 70s. And this just in, the, uh, this afternoon, the White House now says President Trump believes the voters of Alabama should decide Moore's fate, although he finds the allegations, quote, very troubling. More on all this coming up at 5. Karen, back to you. All right. Thank you, Devin. Mm -hmm. Another big story developing in Washington is the tax reform bill that was passed this afternoon by the House of Representatives. The vote was 227 to 205, with 13 Republicans and all the Democrats voting no. The vote followed a visit to Capitol Hill by President Trump. The $1.5 trillion plan would slash tax rates on corporations and private businesses, overhaul the individual tax code, and eliminate taxes on estates. Things do get complicated going forward as the Senate is working on its own version and it has some key differences with the House bill. A second woman has been arraigned in connection with the murder of an O'Reilly Auto Parts store manager. Ebony McEwen Ross entered a not guilty plea in Detroit. Today, she is one of three people charged in the murder of store manager James Holler Jr. McEwen Ross turned herself in on Monday. Her attorney told the court it took her two weeks to surrender because she was seeking legal counsel. She's now being held without bond in the Wayne County Jail. The 28-year-old will be back in court for a probable cause conference later this month. She has no prior criminal history. A shooting suspect in Oakland County is now behind bars and under a suicide watch. We were tracking the search for Michael Quigley yesterday at this time. He was captured just after 5 in the evening yesterday. He's accused of shooting his estranged wife and a male friend at an apartment in Ortonville. They both remain hospitalized right now. A homeowner spotted Quigley hiding in a car. He's in the Oakland County Jail, expected to make a court appearance tomorrow.